We are getting through it and we are getting through this together. So the path forward, I want to talk just a little bit about that and, and I want to really, really appreciate not just the Department of Public Health for working with us on finally giving us uh, an opportunity to have some sort of date or, or, or time frame for what we think is reasonable to communicate to the public on a reopening plan, but I really want to acknowledge and appreciate uh, the Economic Recovery Task Force. And Carmen Chu, the assessor recorder, will go into a little bit more detail about the work that they are doing to get us open, uh, as well as the other leaders of that uh, committee, Rodney Fong with the San Francisco Chamber, uh, Rudy Gonzalez with the San Francisco Labor Council, and uh, our treasurer, Jose Cisneros, and my uh, uh, co my partner in this effort, uh, president of the Board of Supervisors, Norman Yi, um, some amazing people, very talented people uh, who are working hand in hand to not only provide the guidance for reopening San Francisco for our business community, uh, but economic recovery and what that might look like, what the new normal with the guidelines and providing uh, that to our businesses who are wondering, okay, when I open, what am I required to do? So we want to continue to make sure we are getting you prepared uh, for what we know is to come. So uh, just to talk a little bit about the next phase. Um, and so I just want to go over the fact that the state, and, 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 and there's also some confusion as to the state guidelines that are different from the city guidelines. And I want to clarify the fact is, the state has issued guidance for the entire state. Now, the numbers in San Francisco are not the same numbers in Napa County. Everyone has a different uh, scenario and a different guide because they are facing different, every county has different challenges. And so the state has provided us a guide and we are following that guide based on the data uh, in San Francisco to make informed decisions as to when we believe uh, we will be able, able to open safely. And the last thing we want to do is begin the process of reopening, see a surge of cases, and then have to go back to closing the city completely. And we're in a good place. We're in a good place because you continue to follow the guidelines. So let's just get started. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what's going to happen over the next couple of months so that people can begin uh, to prepare for reopening and to work harder on masking, hand washing, and social distancing. So starting June 1st, what will be available are the child cares that are not open now are able to open, uh, the botanical gardens and outdoor museums and historical sites, so places that are outdoors, um, that's going to happen on June 1st. In phase 2B, on June 15th, uh, most indoor retail. So as you know, we announced on May 18th that retail will be able to open for pickup and drop off. And now the opportunity to allow people to come inside of your stores are available. Outdoor dining, summer camps professional sporting events and other entertainment venues with no spectators with approved health plans, private household indoor services. Uh, so that's if you have, for example, a housekeeper, nanny, or others, um, that, that sort of thing can resume. Religious services and ceremonies, outdoor exercise classes, and non-emergency medical appointments. So if you need to go to the dentist, um, or other appointments, uh, those are the kinds of things that you can look forward to. Uh, in phase 2C, July 13th, we anticipate indoor dining with modifications, hair salons and barbershops, and I know everybody is excited about that one. Real estate open houses by appointment only. And in, to be clear, even though this is a guide, this guide and these dates are subject to change if the data determines a needed change. And this is to provide everyone with a guide as to what we are looking at and if the numbers continue the way they are, 
we will hopefully get to a point where these businesses can open. Now in phase three, which is the one I am looking forward to the most, uh, schools with modifications, bars, other personal services like nail salons, massage parlors, tattoo parlors, gyms and fitness centers, playgrounds, swimming pools, and indoor museums. Uh, and finally, uh, in phase four, uh, we have not yet determined a date. All of this is contingent upon what happens as we open phases two and three and the data in determining what is a more reasonable time frame. But we're hoping that concert venues, live uh, audience sports and performances, nightclubs, festivals, and all hotels and lodging for leisure and tourism. Uh, and I, I just want to be clear uh, again that this is just a guide. This is a goal that I have, of course, to get there. And the only way we get there is through your cooperation. And as a result of having more people moving around and contacting and around one another in, in this capacity, it requires that we get a little bit more strict with the face covering. Because we know that social distancing, face covering, and hand washing are really key to helping to prevent the spread. And so what we're asking people to do uh, in our new uh, face covering requirements is when you are outside and say, for example, you're enjoying the park, uh, we're asking you if you're within 30 feet of someone else to wear a face covering. Uh, and we want you to just think about it in a way that it's not necessarily just about protecting yourself, it's about protecting other people. Uh, so we want more people who are outdoors uh, to wear face coverings um, in addition to some of the requirements that we had before. And again, I just want to go back to a comment that I have made time and time again. If you are not the police, please don't act like the police because part of the last thing we want to see are people who are confronting other people and creating uh, uh, what could escalate to a violent situation. Just let us do our job. Do your part. Because as long as you're doing your part, your part is having an impact on everything that we see happening in this city. These numbers are going down because you are doing your part. So for those who are bad actors, unfortunately, you know, we're not going to be able to control all of those folks at any given time. But the last thing I want to see is a confrontation uh, because someone decided that they were going to go out and try and regulate uh, the need for people to wear masks. And we are doing the very best we can. Uh, in fact, the numbers are good. And would I like to open faster? Yes. Would I want these things to happen faster? Yes. But the only way they're going to happen is with our shared experience. So I'm really excited. This is a, a, a great step forward. And what this means for our city uh, is just getting adjusted to our new normal. Uh, I know that more than anything, we all want to go back to the life that we once knew before COVID. Uh, and now uh, for the next anywhere between uh, 12 and 18 months, we are going to back to the life we knew before. Uh, however, with some adjustments to our new normal as a result of COVID. Uh, and, and you all seem to be getting used to it. I, I see folks in line wearing their mask and keeping their distance. Um, I see folks just making the adjustments and I really appreciate that. I appreciate all that each and every one of you are doing uh, to comply because it's really the only reason why we are in this place that we are where we can start to talk about uh, a safe opening plan for the city and county of San Francisco. And just two things I'd like to clarify before I bring up our assessor, uh, Carmen Chu. Um, the health order for the stay at home is extended indefinitely. Uh, so this plan uh, is being implemented, but we are still asking people to stay at home if at all possible. Also, there's been some confusion around office space. And I think that the goal is to provide guidelines for 
you know, working environments. There are some people who will need, as essential workers or as these businesses open, will need to work in offices. But what we're asking people to do, if at all possible, if you have the ability to telecommute, we are asking people to telecommute. And for those who need to come in the office for whatever reason, uh, we ask that you make sure that your work environment is such that you are keeping your staff safe. So we are adjusting again to our new normal. Uh, and we have all this information at sfgov.org. Uh, if you have any questions or any other concerns, please reach out to us. Uh, we are uh, not where we want to be, but we are in a better place today uh, than we were last week. Uh, and finally, I just want to uh, mention that tomorrow I'm, we'll be having a conversation at 1 o'clock with our county health officer, Dr. Tomas Aragon. I know that a lot has been said about county health officers all over the Bay Area and the decisions that they are making. Well, it's time that you meet your county health officer. Uh, and he and I are going to have a conversation uh, to talk about the decisions that are being made and why and how we can uh, follow uh, these protocols in, a, in an effective way that's going to help deliver uh, reopening sooner rather than later. So I'm looking forward to that conversation. Uh, and with that, I'd like to uh, turn it over to our assessor recorder, Carmen Chu.